Hi guys, welcome back. It's turned out to be an absolute glorious day today. Now this video is gonna be like an in-depth walk around about the Fuelwood factory. I'm gonna open the panels up, uh, show you how everything works. Um, I'm gonna do the wood cutter and the wood splitter. And uh, yeah, just give you a full walk around kind of what you don't see on typical demo videos. Yeah, just the ins and outs and the workings. And then uh, you can decide yourself how well it's built. I've zoomed out a bit here, as you can see. You have seen all this before. It is the Woodcutter 400 from Fuelwood connected to the Splitter 400 from Fuelwood with the Elevator Pro because it has uh, the cleaner on the end. Now you can um, get all these separately, so you don't have to buy it in one kit. You can buy the wood splitter itself and use that and manually cut up rings and drop them in and just do it like that. And you could do that for a number of years and then maybe eventually buy the wood cutter if you're tired of chainsawing up rings. Um, you can buy the wood cutter if you've already got, um, say, a Kinlet Pro or a Kinlet 200. I'm not sure if you can get the Kinlet 200 on here, but you can definitely get the Kinlet Pro. So... Kinlet Pro is what I use for making all my kindling. You can actually join that onto the wood cutter. And I'll show you a little feature around the back later, which makes it a bit more fail safe for kindling production. But if you're wanting to process green timber, green softwood or seasoned softwood, cut it straight into the, uh, the Kinlet Pro and bag off kindling on the other end, it will basically be a one-man operation and uh, you'd struggle to keep up, but it would be a one-man operation. So to start with the Woodcutter 400, I am actually going to, hmm, right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the, basically like the ignition, because it gets the lights going, but I am just gonna pull the plug on the sawdust extractor. So, fuel would now add a plug onto the back end of the wood cutter that you plug your uh, sawdust extractor to which I'll show you a bit later but when you turn that on it turns on the sawdust extractor and that then eliminates someone forgetting to turn on the uh, sawdust extractor because if you forget it blocks all this chamber up and then you've got to unplug it all so that turns on straight away now so I'll just turn it on now. That'll get the lights on. Nice big sliding door. Really easy to get in there, really easy to clean. I might give it a quick blow down. Um, I did give it all a clean last time, but then I did a certain number of bags. So I'll just give it a quick blow down and then I'll show you everything inside. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna kind of start left to right. We've got the safety switch on the door, so if it is on and um, and you pull this, it shuts down all the power inside before it lets you open it. This is the lock for the door itself. So yeah, it don't, you can't open it when it's on, you have to press stop and then it will let you open it. Um, we've got the big, basically, valve block there, valve block there, um, oil cooler. This is, that's the chain oil pump. So that pumps uh, obviously chain oil from the back there, straight out the drum, up here, through this pipe, into the bar. Now all you'll see here is a big mechanism, and I'll try and explain how it works. Um, but a lot of it is mechanical arms and rods, and then they switch over cams or hydraulic valves none of it's really electric as such um there's obviously electric solenoids on here um only a few though uh three four four five six so yeah there are electronic solenoids on there but a lot of it is switch out of the valves which is a lot more reliable uh stronger and it's, it's kind of more obvious when something's gone wrong, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I've got the oil tank there. I believe this is a 14 kilowatt motor. I'm pretty sure. 
So a 13 or 14 kilowatt motor. Yeah, oil cooler. So this is the speed controller for the bar. I'll explain how that works a bit later. I'm just trying to concentrate on one thing at a time. So yeah, left to right, um, we've got a grease bank here. That does pretty much everything on this changeover valve or changeover mechanism. So that's easy to grease. And then we've only got about eight to 10 grease nickels to do individually around the machine itself. So you get these two big pins that run through the whole, the whole um, machine. We've got a grease nipple this end, grease nipple that end, one that end, one end, obviously on the back of the machine. And then you've got bearings on the debris belt and bearings on the infeed belt. Uh, you also have a bearing here and a bearing here, and that is it. So it's very easy to grease up and keep maintained. So we'll kind of go over to the saw motor here. Oh, just before I forget, there is actually a click counter on here. Um, so every time the arm comes up and disposes of a ring, so every time the saw comes down and cuts through a ring, it adds another click to the click counter. And that is great for seeing how long your chains are lasting, maintenance, uh, seeing how long a drum of oil is lasting, and just general how many cuts this machine has done. It's got a cut meter, but it also has an hour meter on the electric side. But in theory, you could have the electric on for a long period of time but not cut anything so it's quite good if i was buying a machine i want to know how many cuts it's done uh, that is a true representation of how much work it's done rather than the electric meter but it's good to have both to see how much you're working it every year etc etc as i'm walking around here to get to the saw motor i will just explain what this is all the debris that drops off a log Majority of the sawdust will go up here, which is the sawdust extraction system. But if it drops down there, it will come out on the belt, as you can see, any bark that falls off. But also when you get to the end of the log and there is a thin ring, you may have seen on some other videos, that will then, when this arm lifts up to dispose of a ring, it will drop down onto the belt and get rid of it. And that is where we have a bin. Hi guys, I thought I'd just jump in here. Um, when I say it's a bin, yes, it's a bin because uh, I'm putting waste in it. But all this offcuts and bits go through the Eco Angus boiler and um, create heat for the kiln, basically. So nothing's gone to waste. It's just a form of storing it until I need it at a later date. Onwards with the video. Now, I would like to... I'm a bit close here for how much room I've got but ideally you want some sort of small grid for this extra pipe to suck out the sawdust and then I'd like it to fall down a grid so as I say sawdust drops through the grid and then it will go on to another conveyor belt a really short one up into an IBC but like I said there isn't much room here um and it's not that hard to walk around here while the machine's working away and pick up the rings and chuck them in an IBC. But if you wanted it fully, fully automated, that's something you could probably do. So just come around here. This is the oil drum. Um, I believe this is a 20 or 25 litre oil drum. Um, it comes with this attachment. So you keep the same kind of lid and the pipe and then you just change over the drum and off you go. It's pretty good at getting everything out. So whatever it doesn't use at the bottom of the drum, I put in my uh, chainsaw oil and fuel mix thing um, and obviously use it through the chainsaw that's bar oil. So we go up here, again, another safety switch. So this, this machine's extremely safe. You can't put your arm anywhere you shouldn't. So if you were to lift this up, it turns off all power. So a nice big door, as you can see. 
got a step here. As you see, you can see the saw motor and the chain. So what you do is you whip this little spring off. That retracts this arm. So this arm here, that follows the bar down through the wood and stops the bar from getting pinched. So say um, it's cut through the first kind of third of the, the log, this will then stick in the top. And if the top was to then, if the top was to then squeeze up, it wouldn't pinch the bar in the log. This here is what switches over from fast to slow. So it comes down at quite a, a speed. You can adjust it on the valve block, but once it's set, you leave it. So that comes down. Once this hits the log, it just touches this little solenoid here. And that puts it into cutting speed. And that is what you can change on that little dial, how fast it cuts through the log. So if you're on lots of big stuff, you can just slow it down, let it eat, and off it goes through the log. If you're on smaller stuff, if you've got five or six logs, you can quickly just whip it up and it will fly through the smaller logs a lot quicker. So that's how that works and that's what all this mechanism is. Harvester bar, 404 chain. It's nice and simple to get off. It isn't automatic tensioning, so it isn't like a proper harvester, um, but it's very simple. Two nuts, comes off of there. Got a nice big sprocket. You would have seen maybe in my previous video when we had a little bit of trouble there. Uh, but now it has been faultless. And that literally just drives off a hydraulic motor. Uh, you've got a shaft that runs from the hydraulic motor straight through into the bearing and onto the, um, onto the sprocket. So very strong in that aspect of things. We are going to dial it up and add a bit more pressure to this motor, I believe, just to give it a little bit uh, more speed as well as we may be changing the sprocket to a slightly uh, bigger sprocket to try and increase the tip speed um so it, it's built to last i would like it to cut a little bit quicker so we're going to just have a little bit of a play around with it but um it is built to last 10 20 years it's not it's not one of these machines you have for two to three years and you chop it in for a new one because it's worn out. This thing is built super well. It's just everything solid. Um, and as I say, it really is built to last. That's where one of the other grease nipples was from the back there. And obviously you've got the be big bearings, big greasable bearings on the in feed and the out feed. All the kit has the same size bearings. And I only grease them kind of once a week because they're moving very slowly and they're stopping and starting throughout the day. So just close this back up. Got the spring back there. And I'll just shut this back up. As you can see, everything's easy to get through. Big bolts, very clean. You can, you know, if, if, if there's a problem, it's pretty obvious what it is. Um, yeah. Nice big door. You can lock it off, but gravity holds it down pretty tight. So the little thing I was talking about when you've got a kinlet on, um, I don't, or I've, I've never put a kinlet on here and I probably never will. Once it's set up, I leave it. Um, but you can adjust, this is a laser, and this tells you whether you've got an oversized log in the um in the in feed now if you are running the kinlet pro on it they can only take 250 millimeter rings so you would adjust this down to the 250 mil and if you have a ring you know if you have a, a, a so if you have a length of cord that come in and it's 300 mil it would tell you that it's 300 mil and it will not fit through the Kinlet Pro and you would have to then discard them rings and split them in half. Um, so that's a really neat little feature. I It just stays up here for me, uh, pretty much on the max setting. Um, so sometimes you hear that beeper going off. Um, it's set to 45 centimeters or whatever it is, but it will take bigger. It will take um, 48 centimeters, I think side to side 
but it will actually take even higher if it's an egg shape. This here is a safety arm, that's a dead, a dead arm. So if a log comes in here and hits this arm, it switches the whole machine off, even the woodcutter, um, sorry, e even the wood splitter. So that literally kills everything, apart from the main conveyor. Um, it doesn't kill that. So yeah, nice little handy thing there. Um, I've got a plate to go over this, this hole and I would like to add some rollers just to help aid the bent logs from coming over that wall at the bottom there. But that's a bit of a future project. So this machine has ran off a 60, is it 64? 63 amp. So this has ran off a 63 amp plug. Um, pretty juicy, but it's a big motor. So sawdust obviously gets sucked out of here. You can do whatever you like with that, have a flexi hose. I like the solid spiral, um, never gets blocked up, maybe because I've got a giant sawdust extractor and it probably could go twice the distance, but um, yeah, it just, it's, it's all solid and I can shut these off. I can shut that off there and prioritize the air to this and use it like a hoover. Um, but I, I tend to have them both on about half and that just sucks out any sawdust there up the pipe as well as sucking the main sawdust out from the saw motor. So working way around, I'll try and um, I'll try and explain this in a little bit when I've gone over the whole machine. Uh, so we've got the hydraulic um, clamping arms here. That holds the wood nice and solid and somewhat central. And we've got the positive stop. So you can adjust this to any length. So if you're doing um, softwood rings for the Kinlet Pro, I cut them to 19 to 20 centimeters. Uh, when I'm doing obviously firewood, I'm at 23 to 24 centimeters, but this machine will cut up to split up to 33 centimeters and cut up to 33 centimeters. So you can run it all the way back and do some kind of pizza billets. This is the laser on how it works. So this shoots a laser to this shiny tape here. And when the log comes through, it gets in front of the laser and uh, tells, the, tells the machine to stop that conveyor belt. It then clamps and starts cutting and then it discards it into there. So now you have a positive stop when it hits that, nice positive stop. So all the logs are pretty much the same length. You have this little door, if something does jam up here, if it's got like a knot hanging off the end of the wood and it gets jammed up there, you can lift this up again. This is on a safety switch, so if you lift this up, it will kill the power. And you can deal with it here and just pull it through. Nice lot of part perspex on here. You can see everything, what's happening. Something I need to keep clean. Here you have everything that is on the remote itself. So if you've got two people, say, and one person's outside with the remote, and you see something happening, you can press stop or you can adjust something. Uh, if you lose the remote or the remote runs out of battery and you just need to finish off a log or something like that, you can do. I believe you can actually even spec this machine without the remote, but you'll be mad not to buy the remote. Yes, it's a bit of an option. I think it's about £2,000, £3,000. Don't quote me on that. But without this remote, it's kind of mad because you're then just going to be standing here adjusting because... Uh, Yes, it's automated, but this is in my pocket or in my hand all the time. And you can just flick something forward, flick something back. You can change the direction of the, uh, the elevator. This has got a hydraulic motor on the elevator. Uh, you can stop start the splitter, stop start the wood cutter. Um, and also quite, quite important to this machine is getting that second log butted up against the first log so when it finishes cutting the first log you want that second log up against it it will then drop the the off cut off if there is any down the hole and then it comes up if you've got a gap that end ring can then fall backwards or fall forwards uh, and it just doesn't work as well so it's really good to have that second log butted up against it hence why i've got the tv there so that is why we've got the TV there. 
Uh, we can see the timber deck and we can control the timber deck from here. Obviously, if you haven't got a wall in the way, you don't need the TV, although it is very handy. Um, you can see what's coming down the timber deck, whether there's a bit of timber twisted. But also, I find as soon as this log comes in side the wall, you then bring the next log on and that works out very well for being butted up. The deck is running a fraction quicker than the belt inside the woodcutter. Uh, and that then just helps it chase it up, chase it up. And just as it's coming into the end there, it's touching. But if you need to, you can manually override it, pressing this button here, just tap it forward and that'll butt up against it. And um, you'll have a lot less problems when it changes over the log. And I think it's better than any other processor at changing log purely because you're relying on that second log holding it there. And these arms are very good as well. Here are just two controls. If, if the pinchers grab a log and it's at an angle or it's not something you quite like, um, you can lift this lever up and that overrides the grippers and that then reopens them up. And then you can let go and it will start to clamp them again, providing there's a log touching the laser this if it starts to lift up and something happens it's very very rare you can then press this button or press this lever push it through and that changes over a cam and that lets the log arm say this has started coming up and it gets jammed maybe against here say a log twists and hits this or it hits this bar here because it's a funny angle or a funny shape you can then press that button and it will come back down again because it has to get to a certain point to push this that then pushes something else that then pushes this bar and then it will have to come back down. So you're basically overriding that by pushing this lever all the way through and changing this cam over. Now I'm going to try and explain what this whole situation is doing here, but... I may be slightly wrong. There's a lot going on, basically. So, log comes in, hits the laser. These arms will then grip together, okay? And what happens next is there's a little changeover valve here. So when this comes off of its stop, obviously, that comes up and, gl and clamps against the log. That will change over. This will change over valve here. That then sends pressure to the valve block, clearly. And that will then tell this ram to start coming down, which in turn brings the saw cut down. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible, but it's probably not working too well. Once the saw comes all the way down and hits this, so there's a plate here, as you can see the little mark where it's been hitting. Okay, that comes down, hits this rod. That pushes that rod all the way down, that flicks over this cam. We'll try and do it, but I don't think I'll be able to, no. So that flicks over that cam there, and then that re-diverts oil back to this ram here. This big long ram under here. Lifts up the, uh, once it's finished cutting, it lifts up the saw, and that arm then actuates and puts the, uh, the log up, up there. Then you've got this spring-loaded bolt here, touches this. That goes down to a changeover valve again, tells it to open up the jaws and release the log. Once that's done, this paddle pushes this arm here all the way back and resets that cam, you see? Pushes that cam back and uh, restarts the system all over again. So it's very mechanical, you know, hydraulic mechanical levers, um, changeover valves and rods 
just changing over cam and that thing just flicks back and forward all day so that's really crucial to keep it greased keep it tight you can adjust it all if you need to if it's you know beds in um you're greasing everything nylon bushes um yeah so like i said guys this machine is built to last um it really is you've got two led lights up here one here one here so you can see everything uh i'll just quickly show you this this is a pressurized um log roller i suppose keeps the thing down keeps it somewhat central due to the v shape of the rollers uh they've just got a little ram on top there the only thing i would say it would be quite nice to be able to override that and lift it up because sometimes you're you're trying to deal with a log and it's pushing down on it and you're trying to turn it twist it if it's an say if it's an egg shape and it comes through this way hits the two sides um it's quite hard to then roll it up like that and get it through um because it will cut it it just has to be rolled so it'd be quite nice about to manually lift that up you can roll it and then clamp it back down again but i don't know how hard that is to do got this brush system here that just stops any um excess oil and sawdust from the saw um flicking forward stops it all flicking up here and over there obviously it's flicked here you can see it all built up um so it's oiling really well and that tends to just fall there and then when you blow it with the air gun it drops down and obviously goes out the the end conveyor hoping this video isn't too long so that is the woodcutter. I hope that kind of explains what it is. Um, not much to say on this side of things. It's just got the connections for the timber deck. Um, it's got the, the dead man lever all the way around, obviously. It's just the infeed on that side. So nothing really happening there. But yeah, that is the woodcutter by Fuelwood, made in Great Britain. So. Built like a tank, it really is. It's even got look, a little cam on the door that is greasable. Just things like that. Everything is built so blooming well. It really is. Um, right, we'll, we'll move swiftly on to the Split 400. Um, when it's on the woodcutter itself, you've got two sets of lasers which control the control box now when you're on the wood cutter you can have it on off or well, in this setting it's off anyway that then allows the wood cutter to control the wood splitter so you can control it on the remote you these lasers tell it to stop and start this laser here tells you when the uh, the in feed is full and this one tells you when the end feed is somewhat empty. You don't really want to run these machines completely empty. Um, obviously, when you're doing it manually, you have to be re replenishing the stock um, as it's taking it in. But the more weight it's got to kind of push down. This is a driven belt as well. But the more weight, the better it is, the less it comes back. It has got teeth. Obviously, I'll show you in a minute. But it's just good to keep it full um so yeah when when this is running all the way through and hitting its little flashy uh paper reflective paper it will then turn off the wood splitter and then when it recognizes there's a ring there it will turn back on again and then when it fills it up say you've got the wood cutter off and a ring sits here like this and it's touching a ring that will then turn off the wood cutter so it's very automated and that's sense it turns itself on and off all big greasable bearings again guys uh this is a stop stop lever so if you're here looking like that yes you can turn it off on the remote but if you're doing it manually so you're dropping rings in and something happens down there or jams up the elevator whatever it be but instead of running around there you can just pull that and that will turn off all the, all the uh, hydraulic power. Now there should be a cover on here. 
don't um, don't come at me. <laughs> yes, there should be a cover on here, but I find it very good to look down here and make sure nothing's getting jammed up. Um, I also like to keep it blown out as well. There is a bit of debris down here and here. Obviously, you've got to do it when it's all off. Um, you can take this panel off as well. But another great thing about this machine, big grease bank. That grease is everything but the um, the belts. That grease is absolutely everything but the belts. So very easy. Once it's running, you can just go along, grease everything, give everything a couple of pumps, and uh, that keeps everything tickety-boo. Now, uh, like, like I said, you can run this machine without the woodcutter. You would have to just switch it over on, on this model anyway. You would just have to switch it over onto the on button. And then it's a case of turning it on and off. Now, if it's on and you lift up this arm here, it turns off all the power. Nice little fail safe there. This is just a log kind of weight. It's quite heavy. Um, and if you've got a problem, make sure you pin it back. You don't want that guillotining your hand off between here and here. Uh, trust me, it hurts. Don't ask me how I know. So obviously this is an X-shaped machine. I probably will. I am gonna just put this pin in because it'll be typical that um, something will happen. Okay, so that's nice and secure. Um, this can go up very slightly just as the RAM can go up very slightly. But this is an X-shaped machine, as you all know. It comes in, splits four ways. And depending on how far these teeth push it forward, regulates how big the square log is gonna be. Obviously, you will have uh, triangular-shaped logs around the outside, but if you've got a big bit of wood, you will typically have, depending on what size, obviously, uh, but with my logs, you could potentially have 12 square logs in the middle and then a load of slightly smaller logs around the outside. Um, so I'll show you how you can adjust that, but that's extremely easy to change the size on this machine. You can change the size of the split. Uh, you just have to change the stop on the ram and take this plate out and that'll do 33 centimetres. You can also get a 20 centimetre push plate as well that would probably come up to about here this is the 25 centimeter setting and all the holes and the bolts all line up there's multiple holes so you just move this back and forward and um it does take a little while to change but typically you set and forget um you only do kind of one size and then if you are going to do some longer stuff i would do it for a whole week and get a good stock going and then um and then go back to the smaller setting again so yeah, very simple, as I say, four-way, comes in, splits, uh, moves forward, splits, and then you end up getting that square log. If I can get a little demonstration how it works or a picture, I'll put it over the screen now, but I will do some filming and maybe a bit later. Uh, but if not, go back to some of my other videos about the woodcutter, maybe the big video that went semi-viral. Um, it's currently up to about 260,000 views. Uh, that kind of gives you a really good showcase of how this machine works. So go back and see that, if not. But yeah, um, super simple machine. Once again, everything is built absolutely solid. I don't know how thick this box is, um, but it's just all, there's nothing. I'm obviously the panels are thinner, but everything is solid. And like you would have seen from when we went up to the Fuelwood Open Day and the Fuelwood Factory, um, it's all built in-house, it's all welded in-house, it then goes off, gets painted elsewhere, comes back, gets stickered mm -hmm. up, so it's all built in-house, even electrics, you know, Peter's pretty pretty good on the electrics, he does quite a lot of uh, the woodcutter stuff, that's his baby as such, uh, but we'll go around the other side now, I'm going to leave this all up, because you do need this up to open this door, there's a little right angle there so you can imagine if this was down that wouldn't allow you to open that that rear door so it's another little you have to open that up kills the power and then you can open that up um nice big stop button um not much else to say around here really i'll walk around this way first 
and show you the insides. Okay, so we're around the back now. While we're here, I'll just show we've got a 32 amp plug running the wood splitter. So slightly smaller power inlet. Um, they, they do run off separate feeds. Open this big, nice wide door. If the wall wasn't here, it would go all the way around flush with the machine. So you've got a smaller spool blank on here. There's not much to it. It's very simple. Uh, you can adjust how quickly they move forward and back and stuff like that. But once again, it's kind of set and forget. Typically, you will just let uh, Fuelwood set it up. And, uh, I, and I haven't moved it since, since it's come from Fuelwood. These are the arms that grip the log and push it forward to your designated um, size. That there is the big X-shaped splitter. Nice and thick. Now, this rod here is how far these fingers come forward and push your log forward. That then turns this cam here and flicks over this whole mechanism that then changes power to the rear ram. Once it goes forward, this stop here, so you can adjust this. Um, like I said, if you were doing 33 centimeter stuff, you would have to adjust that back quite far and that would allow, allow the, the splitting knife to come through forward before it re-hits this cam, sends this back, and in turn, changes this whole mechanism over, which then controls the, uh, the, the fingers and the hydraulic motor that runs this belt. So it is literally like three actions. That's all this machine does, is, is run the belt and the fingers forward, flicks over that cam, flicks over that mechanism, it sends oil to the ram itself, that in turn pushes the X-shaped blade forward, splits, flicks that cam back, it retracts. Once that, oh yeah, I've missed out a step there. Yeah, it comes back, then flicks over the cam again, that then redoes this whole system. So there is an electronic um, solenoid there. That's obviously turning all the main power on and off, etc. Uh, but I very rarely come back here, hence why it's so kind of dusty and dirty, um, that that grease bank does all these back here. All, all, all these little wires and cables, it greases the metal on metal here for the um, the runners on the, on the fingers, does all the bearings, does all the cam, literally does everything. It's even got one that goes all the way back and does that pin, even though that doesn't move pretty much at all. I'll just show you that see that coming in there look that wire there comes in the back um so yes it will move very slightly up and down but that's all it would do most of it will be the tiniest bit of play obviously you will have you will have play there will be from brand new there'll be that tiny little bit of play where it goes back and forward that's just to help that um it's better to run it with grease in it than dry so yeah it will move very slightly up and down like that if it hits a big knot, it will ride up very slightly, then come back down. But typically, it will just run on the bottom, forward and backwards. So I'm hoping that's everything back here. Like I said, just all hydraulic pipes, hydraulic, um, changeover valves, cams, super simple. I need to put that spring back on that finger there. Um, there we go, easy as that. And that just helps the, the fingers come out and lock into the log as it's going through. Um, just gonna get a bit of debris out of there while I'm here. But there is a little hole at the back there that most of it drops through. So I have thought pretty much everything. Again, there's an oil cooler on this as well. I'll walk around the other side. But super simple. I need to come around here and give it a bit of a blowout. But um, really not much to it. Very simple machine, very easy to access if something does go wrong, but this machine has been absolutely faultless. We've had it just over a year now. We've done, I would check the counter, but I'm pretty sure it's done about 65,000 cuts. 
So fifty five, sorry, sixty five thousand rings. It's cut and gone through all this, and it doesn't include what I've rung up with a chainsaw and dropped in. So I can't imagine how many times that ram has gone in and out. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely faultless. Oh, before I forget, this is how you change the length. It's hard to see because there's a few pipes in the way, but you have this rod that goes all the way through and flicks over that cam, like I said earlier. That runs all the way through. And at the end here, you see that? It has a series of holes. Now you pull this little pin out. Um, it's got holes, obviously forward and back, but also you can turn it 90 degrees and they're, I don't know if you can see that, they're off center. They're like that, you see? So you can kind of um, change the size very slightly as well. I run these as like one, two, three, and then I do halves. Um, some people do one, two, three, four, five. Um, I just think it's easier. But you can see majoritively where I've been running it in that section there. Uh, let's see. I've been on this setting there. So you drop that in and that will do that. So if you want it really big, you pull it as far out this way as possible and that increases how much the fingers have to go before it hits the cam. And then you can actually do kindling. I haven't done it on this um, because I haven't got the shoot on the end, but you can run it all the way down to this setting and it will go forward and backwards. I think it does like one and a half inch kindling or one inch kindling. So yeah, that would be a serious operation. Uh, if you had, say, a 45 to 48 centimeter ring going through there and going into kindling, that wouldn't take long at all to fill up a bag. Um, so yeah, hopefully that shows you all around them operations. I've tried to cable tie up as much of these pipes as possible. Let's walk around the other side. So not too much happening out the back here. These are the pipes that go to the elevator belt and you can actually regulate the speed of how fast and slow it goes just by turning that knob and then you can lock it off. We've got an 11 kilowatt motor, I believe, on this one. So slightly smaller than that one. Uh, oil cooler again. I do need to give that a blow down. Um, power supply in. And like I said, this Elevator Pro has got the hydraulic motor on it so you can run it off the remote. Now, I was the first person to have this, and I was a bit of a test subject as such. When we first got it, it was great, but every time you would go back and forward, it would work its, like walk itself away from the wood splitter. Now, I told Fuel Wood, and within a week or so, they had designed this clamping system. The main bolt from the, uh, the foot of the elevator bolts onto these two paddles and then the wood splitter itself sit on these two feet to secure it. Now, depending on what setup you have, because a lot of these people will run uh, the elevator straight with this whole setup, which I'll be honest is better because you'll have less problems with logs jamming up there. They'll just be more natural coming onto the elevator and straight up. And then you would also have a greater... Um, slew so at the moment i can go to about there and obviously to the wall so i've only got really a short distance but really pushed it i could probably put four ibcs under it but if you were to think if this was in the middle of a shed or in the middle of a yard you could go from here and probably do 16 to 20 ibcs i would have said i don't know because i haven't tried it but honestly the range of movement you can have all the way around in like a moon shape would be ginormous. So yeah, this, this little yellow thing here is to stop the conveyor walking away on the hydraulic wheels. Um, so yeah, that shows you how good fuel would are. And what I like about it is it is super simple, super simple. Now, originally they were gonna do half as many holes 
But knowing Fjord, they said, well, let's just put loads of holes in it. You have increased kind of setting range. Uh, they're just two plates. It, it, honestly, it's super simple. Two plates uh, together, and you can then bolt in any holes to how far away you are um, from the machine. So you can adjust it down to the last probably centimeter of where you want that elevator. Um, yeah, I keep saying it, but super simple, but super effective design. Um, and they designed that within like a week of me telling them about the uh, the elevator. So just brilliant, brilliant engineering, I think. <laughs> it's, it's all you need. You don't need to over overcomplicate how that is fixed to that machine. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments about that because I was real chuffed. They sent it down. Well, actually, I went up to a few wood open day and they handed it to me and said, take that back and let me know how you get on with it. Now the only which has worked and which which in turn has worked an absolute treat. It doesn't move at all now. I can walk that backward forward all day and it doesn't move an inch, obviously. So yeah. Um, now the Elevator Pro is a great elevator, but it could be better. Um, you get quite a few bits and they drop down through here, but I do believe a uh, few were may be working on the new elevator i'm not too sure um but there is normally a cover over here where the motor connects the shaft there's just a, a chain um that connects the two together on two kind of sprockets if that makes sense you must have seen seen that before um i took this cover off because i never come round here when it's working as such um but i do like to get to this grease point as well as keep that clear blow it out um, it's quite hard to do when the covers on there um, it does build up with quite a lot of waste in here um, I'm not sure if there's anything else I can do about it um, I really don't know but it does work really well it just does sometimes get jammed up from all the small bits we've got So you've got the control box here. This this goes up and down. So once the power's on, you can make this go up and down. Obviously, I'm restricted by the mezzanine floor there. Uh, but you can go quite a lot higher and get over the top of like a trailer. Um, not a huge trailer, but like my, um, like my Nugent trailer, you could fill that up. We've got um, left and right. So if you didn't have the controller on you, you can move it left and right. Before, these were just free, free rolling and you'd have to grab this and just move it back and forward, which is absolutely fine. But now I've had that on the remote, I wouldn't change it, obviously. And then you've got stop start. You can reverse the belt, which isn't like a positive stop as such. You have to physically push it back to it till you're done with it. But then forward, you you lock it in and then it's constant flow forward. You obviously got the cleaner on here. That drops a lot of the, the waste out. So I find this a really good cleaner because it actually takes out somewhat more than you need, which you might say, well, that's, that's a bit mad. I do have to adjust the roller slightly. Uh, it's creeped over. So I'll do that this afternoon. But I find this takes out slightly more than you need, which, like again, some of you say, well, you don't really want that. But my firewood people are getting truly the best quality because they're not even getting bits like that. They will get the odd bit, don't get me wrong. But they're not even getting bits like that. What I do with that, I put that whole bin slowly over the Japa roller cleaner or any roller cleaner for that matter, but I've got the Japa one, or the Yappa, maybe I should say, as so people keep um, correcting me in the comments from the US. Um, and I can get another product out of that, so I get like pizza logs out of that. So they're nice thin slivers, they burn quick, they burn hot, and that's exactly what you want for a pizza oven. So if you didn't have that market, 
then maybe it takes out a little bit too much. But I really like it. Um, obviously, they're flared. They're very slightly tighter together there than they are there because it was the other way around. All they do is get caught up. I really like this kind of bar in the middle. So sometimes you get like logs connected to each other out of the splitter um, where the knife hasn't gone all the way up. So I've got it finishing at about an inch, inch away from that front plate. So sometimes you get a bit of stringy stuff that, st that keeps it together. Quite typically that will hit that and rip them apart as well as kind of bashing the logs and moving them side to side where it hits and then drops more debris off. So when I'm filling up the vented bags and they're going straight to the customer, I know they're getting you know, a really clean product. Don't get me wrong, there will be the odd bit in the bottom. There will be a bit of bark, especially after it's then further dried in the barn and I move it onto the truck and then move it from the truck to the delivery. They will drop off bits of bark and stuff, but I know they're getting a really clean product. You know, if I didn't have this on there, all this would be in bags and I would get endless complaints. So yeah, just think about that. I know it's somewhat of an expensive option. It's not too bad when you get it bolted onto the end of the conveyor, but you can get these freestanding and I don't know how much they are, but they're quite expensive. Um, but I think it's worth it, basically. Um, I really do. It's, you get a really nice product and uh, all your customers are very happy. So like again, these are just all big bearings. Uh, threaded rod for the tension and adjustment. Um, and just a hydraulic motor at the bottom there. And you can angle this cleaner up and down um, obviously, if you have it slightly flatter, you'll get a longer clean. But I've got this just right because if it's if it's like really wet, not as in green wood, but wet, like soggy and it's a bit composty, they can stick on here. I have to keep an eye on that. Uh, and quite typically, I would discard them wood anyway. Um, but I've got it just right, so then they're coming off pretty much. They're just slowing and stopping down as they're coming off, and I'm getting the maximum cleaning. If you've got them hitting this and shooting off, they're not really cleaning too much. You want it really to be flattened out and the logs to come off, but all the other bits to come through. So, yeah. Right, guys. That is going to be the full walk around of the Fuelwood factory. The Fuelwood Woodcutter 400, the Splitter 400, and the Elevator Pro. Let me know in the comments what you think, any improvements you guys would make. The only improvement I'm thinking about doing, and I'm not sure because it's gonna take up more barn space, but I'm thinking about having a small conveyor from there to, our kind, of, to kind of where that white bag is just a short kind of two meters as such firstly that would help break up the logs coming out of the wood splitter and be less of an angle so you'd be dropping onto there that would break them up and then it'd be dropping into this elevator that i'd re reconfigure to there and in theory the elevator would be coming out near the diesel tank and you could get more of a reach. Um, and I just think it would work slightly better. You'll have slightly more height. But let me know what you think. I mean, in theory, I could run a long elevator all the way to where that kind of gas bottle is. Let's have a look. This is, you know, it potentially it could work. You could run a long conveyor from there to there, somewhat along the wall. And then you could have the Elevator Pro here doing that, so it's easier to come in and out. Let me know what you think. Um, I don't know, I just always think about better ideas, but that could be an option. Um, I do our elevators and conveyors and stuff, and I just think that would work quite well because it's a bit tight in here. Uh, it does work well, but you have to turn 90 degrees every time to pick things up. And then when I'm picking up cages, you're quite tight to the 
splitter. Now, we're really maximising the barn space here, if I'm honest with you. Um, I crammed the, um, the Kinlet Pro underneath the stairs, and it works a treat in there like that. Um, but, yeah, we're all filled with stuff pretty much, apart from the Palax outside, which has been a great machine for the small stuff. Now, you don't want to put anything smaller than, I think, 25 centimetres through this machine. It really sings in graded wood. 25 up to 48, it really does, just about does a 48 centimetre ring. Let's say 45, so 25 to 45, this thing sings. Any smaller than that is quite slow, uh, and you do get a bit of waste off it, if I'm honest with you. Hence why I bought the Palax. Um, but I think if you buy this machine, you are looking for quality. You're buying quality logs. Um, it's, it's all what you want from a machine, if I'm honest with you. I don't think any machine is fantastic at doing everything from 10 centimeter round logs up to, I mean, some people want to do a 60, 80, 90 centimeter log. I don't know. Um, you won't have one machine that does it all. You just can't, can't do it. So this stuff is good for medium to big, you know, four, a 45 centimeter ring is pretty big. Yeah, there are machines out there bigger and they will produce wood extremely quickly. Um, but that's what I've got so far. And I'm very happy with it. This thing has produced a lot of wood in within a year and it hasn't been running every every day. I, I would like to up production again this year. Um, it's just the way the business rolls, you know? I'm glad I had it. If I still had the transor now, we would have been swallowed last year. We really have pushed this thing quite hard. And I think 65,000 cuts is pretty impressive. There are people that do it slightly more. Uh, but also I know people that have done a third of that in a year or half of that in a year. So we've done pretty well with it and I'm very pleased with it. Nothing's broken on it. Uh, we had this little sprocket problem. But apart from that, it's been faultless and it's built like a tank. And uh, I can imagine it's going to be like this for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, there will obviously be things to change, but um, it's just all built so well. Everything's greasable. The bow blocks, Peter did tell me where they come from, but he said they're the best in the business. They really are. Um, you can't get any better. So maybe if Peter sees this video, he can drop a comment below where the valve blocks come from um, and I will pin it to the top of the comments so Peter if you can do that that'd be great hopefully you've enjoyed this video it's been a bit of a different one but I was it's a bit of a quiet day and I thought you know what we're going to do an in-depth machine tour of the fuel factory um, if there was anything I missed please leave it in the comments below let me know what you think in the comments below uh, I really like to hear your th feedback anything you would change what do you think about my elevator idea um, or conveyor idea, maybe I should say? Um, always wanting to improve, guys. You know this. I'm trying to automate as much as I can, make things as easy as possible and make quality firewood at the same time. So, yeah, let me know what you think. That is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did make it this far, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. I'll see you guys in the comments and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.